just feel your body in your chair, your hands where they're resting on your legs, your back against the chair, nice soft neck. Let the top of your head just float up, open up. And notice if you feel any energy in the palms of your hands or really anywhere in your body. We've been together for almost two days now doing work about energy, feeling it, giving it, receiving it, exploring it. And I know that you feel differently than when you came here on Friday. So just enjoy that space, enjoy what it's giving you, enjoy how it's opening you, healing you, filling you up. <sighs> so you may, whenever you're ready, open your eyes or keep them closed, whatever feels right to you. Our first question is tonight is, how, cryon, do we maintain our balance in a world that seems crazy out there and chaotic where we don't know what's going to happen next or where? We don't know where we're going to be, if we're going to have a job, what the economy is like. How do we find our own personal balance in that? Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. before the questions are answered. We wish to set an energy in the room of congratulations, of honor. We wish to remind you this. It is a sacred moment. One that is known by God in advance. Not because there is predestination, but because the potentials are so strong that would bring you here, that here you are. If we were to go back in what you call your time, the potential existed when the meeting was struck, when the agreements were made, before the chairs were counted. The potentials that you would see and feel and interpret the energy we're all here. And here you are this day sitting in the chair, whether you've been here for two days or you've just arrived. An appointment is at hand. And the answers to the questions are not the subject here. For we speak in what is called the third language, yet again we explain this as the catalyst language, the one that you sit in and soak up the love of God. And if you'll allow it, these moments will bring you closer to that which is and what is called the multidimensional self. For lurking, and we use the word lurk because it is not clear where it is to you. Lurking in every single human being is that which vibrates very high. An extremely complex system, a plan, a benevolence, a love in every single one. Enhanced by the ancestors that you are and have been and are around. And now in this assemblage, also enhanced by the ones you've loved and lost who are here. So let us make it clear one more time who is here. You have a human being who's alive and well sitting in the chairs, well enough to sit in the chair. And you have the others. An old human being, you want to singularize them, you want to say who they are, you want to give them names, and I will tell you, it's an entourage and it's an assembly. 
that is bigger than you can imagine, who knows who you are, knows the reasons you came to sit. And during this time we call Q&A, it won't be for them. For you are opening your hearts and your minds for a little while, suspending reality for a moment in time. And they know that, so that perhaps they can whisper things to you while you are partially out of linearity. And perhaps you will, you will even smell them, feel them touch you. And know that I am correct, that all things work together in a plan. Listen, there is no such thing as death. There is no sting in this. It is simply a recalibration. And when it occurs, and you return new, young. You return with full knowledge of all the spirituality that you've ever learned, dear ones. Should you choose to work with it, you can. There are those in this audience, in this assemblage, who need to hear this before I answer the first question, and it is so. When you were born, you knew your direction. You knew that contract was to come back as a light worker. You knew at some intuitive level. But with free will and free choice, many of you did nothing. And then there were some who did, and many who awakened to purpose and realized that they were more than they thought, that God was bigger and you were told. And then there are the ones, and I know who you are, sitting here now. And it's just happening now. And so I want to say congratulations for an awakening which is profound. For you will never be the same. May you walk out of this place differently than you came in. May the love of God hover upon you and you would feel it so strongly that you would smile, even in the rain. <laughs> Question has been asked about balancing. The word chaos has been used. It has to be worrisome. In your culture to see what is taking place in this economy, in this country, and that is what we are addressing. Although I will tell you what happens here will happen in the rest of the world, it is the way it is. And this country often sets standards that usually then become that which is practiced elsewhere. One of the reasons you are here is because of that. For the old soul whose consciousness changes this country, changes earth. But dear ones, don't use the word chaos. Because that's not what's happening here. You want to see chaos? I present this in the most loving manner I can. I want you to bless what you have and congratulate yourselves on the recalibrating economy, although it may be difficult. But it isn't chaos. You've seen chaos. And there are humans on this earth right now looking at chaos. Oh, let me take you to Haiti. Hmm. Living in cardboard boxes without food, Orphans without parents who used to have them and nobody cares. That's chaos of the highest order and it is survival. And there will be those who simply don't make it. You don't have chaos here and you're not going to have it. You've got to start understanding 
what is taking place so that you can relax within it and work the puzzle. There will be those perhaps who have lost their jobs, maybe even their homes. You're still eating. You're still loved. You may even still have transportation and hope. That's not chaos. What this country has done in these last years is what we foretold you would do. Three years before that which you call the recession, I told you it would take place. It is published in the crying books that some of the largest corporations in this fine country would fall. That one of the largest institutes would fail called insurance and it did, it was number one. And these have crashed for a reason because the old system of banking, insurance and greed cannot stand up with a new consciousness. And in the process, the fine balance is to take them to that point, not where they will crash, but where they can still sustain the economy in a marginal way so there isn't chaos, so there is food and there is caring and there is health care while they rebuild. Give yourself another three years. Watch it start to improve. The rules are so new that even those that call themselves bankers don't know what to do with their money. Too new. Still demonstrations outside that which you call the exchange showing disapproval even now with the system of greed. Watch for a balance to occur that is fairer for all. Watch for banking and insurance to start progressing to something that it always should have been but never could achieve in an old energy of greed. Oh, also watch <laughs> for some steps backwards and then forwards. For the greed mongers are always there and they will try things to pull it backwards to get their way. Only this you'll watch. For the first time, public outcry will create an almost instant reversal every single time they try, and that's a first. In the past, when they wanted to pass those kinds of rules so they would make more and take less from you and more from you as they deemed proper in their own minds, all they had to do was do it. <laughs> And now they can't, because everyone is watching. And what did we tell you some years ago? There would come a time when everyone can talk to everybody, and there can be then no secrets. This is the key. It is the key for you in your endeavors to hold the light in this country. We'll build a new system slowly that will then create again the kind of abundance you were used to. The unemployment rate will start going down. And you will recover. And you remember these words and the timing. And perhaps then you can look back and say it was worth the effort. It was worth the effort. Balance yourselves, light workers, and understand what is going on. It's what you signed up for. It's why you're here. I dare you to celebrate the recession. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So the second question is a couple of parts here. What, if any, are the physical symptoms of ascension? And am I not being spiritual if I go to the doctor? And at what point 
do I seek medical attention? Fine questions indeed, for they start a discussion that is appropriate and true. Knowledge that should be given to the light workers about these things have to do with a fine line you walk. Indeed, in your culture, in your society. Part one. The question about the symptoms that are physical about ascension is easy. <laughs> Look for joy. <laughs> Look for joy. Can you be among the ones who think it's chaotic in your economy and be joyful? If you can, that's a physical sign. Can you be joyful in the presence of chaos? Can you go to work at a company who's been cut to the quick and you're one of the few who's left doing twice the amount of work at half the pay? Hmm. And can you be joyful being there? Even though others show up and complain, can you be joyful there? That is a symptom of ascension. It is easy. It is easy. And so there are those who are saying, I can't do it. I hear you. I want to take a moment and lay my hand on you. It is not that hard. When you can take the hand of spirit, it isn't that hard. If you're going to go it alone, it is hard. And that's the difference. I can hear your tears. And that's the difference. And we pause. And I clear my partner's mind. I don't want him to feel what I see. How long is it going to take you to cross this barrier and take the hand of spirit when it's outstretched the way it is? Invention, science, medicine on this planet has all increased in the delivery of its sophistication by design. Have you ever seen or noticed that invention on the planet happens simultaneously in many places at the same time? This would tell you, would it not, that consciousness is a field and then when it's right for these things they are placed upon consciousness and many humans receive it at the same time. The invention of flight was a race to who could do it first. Almost within days, you won. Invention of the radio. All given at the same time. Even today, disputed who did it first. And so we tell you that that which your doctors have, the sophistication that they have, the instruments they have, all God-given. It's a combination of going to those who are medical doctors and that which you can do yourself it's a combination it always has been it always will be always will be until that time when your DNA works at a hundred percent and you can heal your body instantly but at this juncture where you have DNA working at thirty percent there is only so much you can do for yourself you can start a process and then you can have the doctor measure it. The teacher, Sid, is walking today differently because of a miraculous operation that he under, underwent weeks ago. And that is not something he could have done himself, not yet. Even the healer had to take advantage of that which was God given to the doctors of the planet and he is alive today, walking today, will live longer today and be a healer in a place that needs it. Do you understand what I'm saying? 
in all appropriateness, use the things that your intuition will tell you you need from that which you call the medical profession, which is God-given. The knowledge, the instruments, the technology, all appropriate, all for you. It's a combination. There will be some things that you can do for yourself that used to be that which you'd go to a doctor for. Innate is going to become a sharper instrument. That is to say, it will be able to do things now with you and for you, especially chemical balance in the body that can never be done before without the assistance of drugs. There'll come a time, and not too far, where light workers will be able to only take a fraction of the insulin for diabetes. It'll be almost like a tincture in homeopathy. They'll still be able and must have an injection, but it'll be extremely small compared to what they used to have in the insulin giving a signal to the body in what to do instead of having the drug do it. This is what you're to look for. Certain kinds of medications that you're taking now, you might experiment in cutting them back very, very slowly and safely measuring what is taking place, finding that you might not need as much because innate is starting to work better. DNA is starting to be more improved in the percentage of efficacy. You understand, this is the new energy. Don't do anything foolish, but push the envelope. <laughs> the next question concerns the evolution of the human's consciousness and how it is in relationship to the rest of the universe as we evolve. Incredibly insightful. <laughs> and given by somebody who already knows the answer, or they could not have constructed the question. One modifies the other. From the beginning, we have told you that this planet is a test of energy. It's not a test of humans. Do you understand the difference? It's a test of energy. In what direction and vibration will the energy of the planet go when measured by those entities called human beings, which are really angels in disguise, walk among that which we call the entities of Gaia? The test of Earth is about the universe. And we have told you this, it is the only planet of free choice, the only one. If you want to know the lineage of how this has worked, a benevolent God creating the universe with intelligent design, there's a plan. And there are planets that are populated even today that used to be the only planets of free choice. One of them, which will become nameless, is your seed. And that is in the Pleiadians. And they were the last one. They passed the torch to you. Approximately 100,000 years ago, the earth began to be seeded. The creation story is well known, has been told over and over by myself, and now the earth sits in that, in that fulcrum of testing. And it will do so for a great amount of time until the vibratory level is high or not when it is tested finally. Not in your lifetime, not in the next lifetime, not in the next ten lifetimes will this take place. There is much time left for this planet to be then measured. Let me rewind what you call your time clock. And let us go back almost 200,000 Earth years. And I want to place yourself not here, but on a nameless planet where the Pleiadians are, in the Seven Sisters. And they were on the cusp of graduation. 
Let me describe a planet that is at peace. Oh, dear ones, they're here. You know they are. <laughs> There's a benevolent, caring seed of you. And they shine like the sun. They became quantum. They became multidimensional. They found their higher selves. And their planet had a, a complete and different purpose to seed yours. To watch over yours. To make sure that the test was accurate and true. Oh dear ones, I'll tell you something I've never said before. This is a sophisticated group. You need to hear it. It's the Pleiadians who keep the riffraff away from you. And they do a good job. So that the test will be unmolested. I told you once that this planet is hidden. That most of the planets with the kind of life that would sustain that which is like humans have two suns. And there's a reason. Because two suns create a far greater chance of life beginning and photosynthesis to take place. You lost one of them. You only have one sun. So those who are looking for life are looking in the wrong place. If you want validation of this, I will tell you this. Your astronomers are looking for planets. Over a thousand of them have been discovered so far. They've just found one with two suns. <laughs> it exists. And they're going to find more. And as these things unfold, you will see the prophecies of Cryon. And the words from me are starting to make sense. Now this earth holds a test. Go back with me 200,000 years. On the other planet, in the Seven Sisters, there was indeed a graduation. I cannot explain this to you, for it's not in 3D. But let me tell you this that when that planet was measured and seen for what it became the rules of this galaxy changed your universe is this galaxy other galaxies different rules other galaxies different physics there is no one physics for the universe so think only on your galaxy that which is in the middle contains energy you have not yet discovered. You have no idea what it is or why it is. It is a multidimensional energy that defies all physics ever known. It's far grander than a black hole. <laughs> it's part of the plan. It provides communication. There's even spirituality there. The universe made of these galaxies all have tests going on. In this galaxy of yours, you are the only planet of free choice. 200,000 years ago, this galaxy changed phenomenally. The rules changed because of the Pleiadians. You're the next step. Now, here's what you should know. The alignment that you're in, the 36 years you're in, all of these things coming to a fulcrum, to the midpoint of the solstice, is the grandest thing we have ever expected and seen from you. Over and over, you have failed to cross the bridge until now. And you can find many prophecies that said you wouldn't. That's how common it is. You'll find more prophecies that said you wouldn't cross this bridge than those who said you would. And you're sitting right in the middle of the bridge and crossing it. I speak perhaps in terms that are metaphoric, so let's clear it. My partner is saying, say it again, clearer. This planet is headed for the same place the Pleiadian planet made it. And this is the fifth try. 
And it's working. And you have free choice to do anything you want with it. But when the Soviet Union fell over, and when the other things that you see started to fail, that used to then promote that dark energy, including what you call the Illuminati, they're not here. Oh, they're lurking. <laughs> but they're not controlling anymore. The Internet would never have happened had you not had this enlightened place to put it, where everyone could talk to everyone, enhancing and accelerating this light of yours. Yes, the Pleiadians had the Internet. <laughs> How can I be clearer? You can take this anywhere you want to, but the ball is rolling. The relationship between you, your ascension, what you do here, the crystalline grid, affects this galaxy right in the middle and changes the rules. And right now I'm telling you, you look to be just like those who seated you. Congratulations. And remember, it's not over. You can do anything you want with this. You can pull it backwards. Or you can keep it going. Lightworker, that's why you're waking up. Ryan, you've spoken about the new earth. Can you tell us if that's been changing and where exactly is it? Question was just answered. You're sitting upon it. The new earth is the description of a planet that no longer has energy which will take you to war. The new earth is a description of a planet who is ripe and ready for human beings to live a great deal longer than they live. Doing it on their own through chemical balance, through DNA enhancement, through medical science, through supplements, through discovery. The new earth is an earth that looks so different from the one of a hundred years ago that a visitor coming back a hundred years later and arrives today will say, what happened here? You sit upon it. You're part of it. And the promise is great. Crying, you've written books and spoken a lot about our indigo children, how can we as parents and even those of us who are not parents support children with ADD and ADHD diagnoses and how can we honor them in the public school system that we have now? Let us be clear that spirit did not identify them as indigo. A human did. For spirit, these children are simply children of new consciousness. Now my partner made a point earlier to say that there is no such thing as generalization of consciousness. And just as it is true that every single one of you is re remarkably different from your lives, from what you believe, to the path you're leading, spiritual beliefs, and what you must do. Every child who enters this planet of new consciousness is at different levels of it. The ones who are the highest level, that is to say, the ones who are the most quantum, you have a name for. Autistic. They are savants. They have no linear barriers in their brain. They are ultimate uber conceptuals. And they have an incredibly different, difficult time with your linearity. The parents in here of an autistic child know that when you speak to them and they look at your voice, if they will even look in your eyes, they can't understand it. You can see their brain struggling to put the words in a row, to place them in their brains in a row. That's how you speak. That's the linearity you have, and they don't. 
and they struggle to linearize. You're going to discover how to work with the autistics eventually. And it's going to come with you becoming more conceptual and giving them burst information that they can understand. And it may take some technology that you have not seen. You go on down that scale of enlightened conceptual human beings that are being born now and you have then what I would call the most, the, the mode, the average. The children are coming in far, far less linear. And so that is to say they want discipline, they want understanding and they want teaching in conceptual ways. They have scoped the energy of the puzzle and have the answers ready before you open the door. They know what they know long before you tell them what they should. In school, they're bored. They're bored. You cannot give them pablum when they see so much more the whole meal. Learn how to teach these children conceptually. Number one, give them the meal first. Give them the payoff right away and then find out what they want to know about it. It's backwards. You start by giving the facts leading up to the payoff. If you're going to teach algebra, you have to start with math. You have to start with the principles. You have to start with this and that. Why not start with algebra and ask them what they don't understand? <laughs> you see the point. Show them what's happened on the earth. Give them a synopsis of human history and ask them what they'd like to know about. There is a new way of teaching afoot. And it's exactly backwards than you think. And the children are going to rise to the occasion and it will be a challenge. It will be exciting. It will be a puzzle. And you're going to have to work harder at it because each child is going to have a different path. There are schools operating in this way right now. Study them and see them and try to slowly implement these things where they're not being implemented. And now the obvious. Don't wring your hands and wonder what is going to become of these children. Let me tell you what's going to become of these children. <laughs> they're going to be so disappointed in the way school works, they're going to become teachers and change it. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You see? Look at their age. You got a 10 year old who is struggling, not doing well, bored in school, having trouble, 10 years old. Look at the age. Now, how old is he in a decade, a simple decade? Old enough to be in that study group, perhaps even to have graduated and be on the cusp of his degree to be a teacher. Ten years, that's all. It's happening sooner than you think. And then another ten, and they will be the principals, the administrators, what you call the bean gowners. <laughs> it will make a difference. It's on its way. So understand what I'm saying is the consciousness now is not going to stay now. And yes, you may have to have the old energy stay until it retires. And some of you know exactly who I'm talking about. <laughs> and then the opening comes. And you'll start to slowly see the change. Oh, dear ones at home, if you have these children, this is so difficult of a concept to understand. They know about your relationship at home more than you do. They know the energies, the difficulties, the puzzles. They're not like you used to be. These children have a con concept of life. They have a concept of consciousness. My partner tells the story, and I will as well, that in an older energy, when parents fight, the children hide. For it threatens the very survival of their hearts. Worst thing that the children could ever see would be trouble in the family. 
And you know the hurt that's there and the fear in their eyes as you find them in the closet later after the yelling match is over. Oh, that is not the conceptual child. For the conceptual child will see what is happening, stand his ground, and offer suggestions. <laughs> mm. Conceptual puzzle solvers. What happens when a human being sees concepts? I will tell you, they are very fast to see the answers. A linear human has to walk through the linearity of the puzzle piece by piece by piece and by the time he gets to the last piece he's forgotten the first and the concept may never appear and that explains politics <laughs> that's a cry on joke the children of new consciousness are also going to be your congress people and you're going to see conceptual solutions to problems that have been hanging on the shelf unsolvable for decades. But when the conceptuals arrive, they'll see it as a group. Bam. Problem solution. They work together. You'll still have a party system. You'll still have disagreements, all of the things you have now. But you'll have concepts you've never seen. And there'll be some of you who will slap your heads and say, why didn't we think of that before? <laughs> and the reason is because you're looking at a different kind of thinking. It's more enlightened. Oh, not all of the children are enlightened, but most of them are conceptual. They have the same opportunities you do to find that which is their higher selves. They're not born spiritual any more than you are, but they're born conceptual. So that's what you can do. And the final one is this. For the teachers in this group or listening to this channel, for the teachers, you've got to look into their eyes and treat them like your brother and your sister. You can't look at them and understand and figure out how old they are, what they might know or not know. You got to look at them like a peer and explain the issue like a peer and ask them what they would do and what they need. Instead of a situation where they sit in front of you and you're the adult and they're not and they're just going to do what they're told, that's not going to work. They know better. They pick it up right away. They will dishonor you if you do not honor them. And some of the parents have already figured that out. <laughs> this question is about the consciousness of Gaia and human consciousness. And did that consciousness we call Gaia have a choice in incarnating as Earth instead of human? An intellectual question. <laughs> so now I give you the lineage and you will understand better. You think of Mother Earth as the grandmother. Naturally, in your bias as human beings, mothers give birth, mothers nurture, mothers give instructions. They cook meals, they take care of you, they are the authority. Gaia is not. Gaia laid null and void until the humans started building the crystalline grid. And as the humans built consciousness, they gave life to Gaia. Therefore, Gaia and the entity that you would call that which is the mother became Gaia through the efforts of you. That is why Gaia reacts to your consciousness. As my partner was saying earlier today, the scientists have seen it. It is why Gaia reacts to what you do. Gaia is there as a nurturer, big as it is. It exists to comfort you based upon what you have created, which is called Gaia. Therefore, it is backwards than what you think. I have told you these things before, dear ones. You and I, all of you, stood.
stood and watched this planet you call Earth develop from a piece of molten dirt. And in that, you and the consciousness of the peace of God's you are, put Gaia together. And as you then became humanity, you put the salt of your energy into the planet. And it then honored you. The portals of the planet are your resting places for the old souls. The cave of creation, which is that place where the Akashic record is located, beautiful for you, created for you. Therefore, it is Gaia who reflects human nature, human consciousness, the energy, and it is Gaia, ultimately, that the measurement is taken to find out how the Earth is doing. Well, this is our last question we have time for. And this question comes from a clarification about what you speak about this side of the veil or that side of the veil and the coming and going from one to the other. And will there ever be an evolution that makes that something that consciousness and incarnations don't do and we all become totally luminous let's ask a Pleiadian and they're here when they seeded the earth you won't find any bodies you know they stayed, don't you? They had to. And they committed what they would call their soul's lifetime to your planet. But you're not going to find any bodies. Now why would that be? Ask an aborigine about the ones who had the names which were not pronounceable. Ask the Aborigine about the seven sisters and he and she will tell you that they landed there and they landed there and they took up residence here and you couldn't go there. No one could. It was too sacred. And how long ago was that? 30, 40,000 years. And this day, right this minute, they're guarding the same places and saying they're still there. They feel the energy. I'm giving you a roundabout answer to a very good question. The Pleiadians are in graduate status. They no longer incarnate because they don't die. <laughs> the cold sore, the, the, that which is the core of the soul is connected so strongly because they have quantumized all that they are that they become the singular soul. Now my partner is saying stop and start again. <laughs> and I will. In the cave of creation right now there is crystalline and that crystalline represents your soul. One soul many lifetimes. You have to understand this. Like rings in a tree. You have one soul with many lifetimes. Right now your higher self is your best friend and it has been your higher self every single incarnation. Therefore if you want to touch the Akash you better get in touch with the one who's been there every single time. That's you. It's the core. Now imagine a time where you become so integrated that you no longer need death. And instead you come and go from one side of the veil to the other just like you'd walk from one room to the other. You can hardly tell whether you're a creature of God or that of a planet. And at that point in time the planet does not stop. <laughs> It's hard to imagine such a place where it would seem to be half virtual and half in 3D, but that is what it is. 
There'll come a time when the actual planet itself of the Pleiadians disappear and they know it. When they have alighted what they have in their, in their vernacular as their Gaia becomes a high enough of consciousness, it, it will be just like them. Yes, as you come to a place where you are able to touch your higher self and this spreads to other humanity and it's not in this generation or the next one or the next one or the next one. We are talking about a lot of years. You know that. And when it takes place, and it could, just like it did there, there will be no death. There's two places on the planet right now that are very, very Pleiadian. You might say they have decided to reside there in their multidimensional states where there is no time where they wait for you to do something and now I present it to you in the mountain called Shasta they're there climb the mountain you'll see them <laughs> some of them will show themselves they love you. You're a sister and a brother. The original teachers of Lemuria reside in the island of Kauai. And that is why that island has never been and never will be conquered by a king, by military, or government. It cannot be, for they live there. And they wait. They never died. They've been on this planet as long as the planet sustained enlightenment. A hundred thousand years. What are they waiting for? I'll tell you what they're waiting for. They're waiting for what you're doing right now. If you pass this 36 year timeline and plant the seeds that we think you're planting, that we see that you're planting very slowly, and sometimes what you think chaotically, you're going to cross that bridge that we said you were going to cross 22 years ago. And I promise you there come a day when you're going to meet them. And they're going to say to you, well done sister, well done brother. And then and only then, can they go home? And it won't be long past that that you'll start to understand what it's like to ascend. Now that's the far future and it's speculation based upon potential. It's not fortune telling. It's predisposed, not predestined big words. So let us finally return to where we started. You're going to have to balance. I told my partner to shut it out and he did. I told my partner not to feel what I saw so that he wouldn't come away with anything out of integrity. For it's not up to him to see those in this room who have secrets or in trouble or in confusion. But I see it. And I don't want to let this, this group of precious old souls leave this room without taking the hand that is theirs in the higher self. At least try it. And leave different. It is so available. And so difficult at the same time. For you to believe it. Or believe you need it. Or for some of you even to want it that bad. Fear of enlightenment is always there. Oh shaman. Let's talk about the shaman. And those in the audience. You got three of them. 
One credentialed. I know who's here. <laughs> Think I don't know who's sitting here. <laughs> what possessed you to get that namakar? What possessed you to become that which is the shamanic? And I will tell you because this is what you did before. Only before it didn't turn out real well. If you know what I mean. And so you had to cross that bridge. And that's what you teach. How to get through the fear of enlightenment. Because old souls have made mistakes in the past when they awakened. And those in the villages saw them as different. Burned them as witches. Whatever. And here you are again. Witch and warlock. <laughs> Shaman, holy men, holy women. I've said it before. What is the attribute of a holy man in the tribe? Do you remember? You got to live outside the tribe because you're too strange. You are shunned, so you live alone. But you're the first one they come to for help, right? Mm. Now, does that ring a bell? <laughs> and here you sit yet again. I want you to cross that bridge. Don't fear it. It's back, but it's back in an energy that is so different. The Pleiadians are in the room. And they're comforting you. In a way, your soul group is their children. Ancestors that are Lemurian in this room. You knew them. You saw their faces. Think of that. Cross the bridge. Don't be afraid. And here's the promise that we give you. In this new energy, you will not be seen as odd, strange, and different. You will be seen as balanced. That's the difference. Isn't it time for this? Let it begin. This night. And every heart here. And so it is.